Hi guys, Olive here, here today to review two books on otters. The first book I'll be talking about is The Otter's Tale by Simon Cooper. This book was published in 2017 by William Collins, which is an imprint of Harper Collins, and my paperback copy that I purchased with my own money comes in at 288 pages. This book is primarily a work of natural history, although there are some elements of memoir in here, although they're quite unusual ones. I'll explain what I mean by that in just a moment. This author purchased an abandoned water mill on a chalk stream in Britain and fairly quickly realized there was a family of otters living out there. And so he began to observe them. And those observations are what go on to make up the majority of this book. But although our author is the one narrating all these things, telling us what he was seeing, he doesn't really include himself all that much. He really limits his role to that of an observer. Yet instead of just detailing what he knows about otters and what he saw outside of his window, he takes all of that information and morphs it into a story about this one female Eurasian otter, which is the species of otter that lives in Britain. He named this otter Kushta. And he begins her story two years before he even enters the picture, when he talks about how Kushta would have been basically cast off by her mother when it was time for her to be on her own, which is something that we know is very distressing to otters, who are very reliant on and attached to their mothers for nearly the first two years of their lives. Obviously, Cooper wasn't around for that part, nor is it likely that all of this is coming from his own observations of this otter family. In Instead, it's clear that he's pulling from both his own observations, but then also the scientific knowledge that we do know about this species of otter in crafting this story. So he talks about Kushta seeking out her own territory, then finding a mate, having her babies, raising them the best that she can, trying to ensure that all of them survive the winter, and then setting her cubs out on their own when it's their time. During those sections, just through the storytelling, we learn a ton about otters. We learn just how territorial and solitary of creatures they are, how females are solely in charge of rearing the cubs, but how cubs are sometimes abandoned and the reasons that are probably behind that. We learn what their favorite foods are versus the ones they just have to resort to when pickings are slim. And we also find out how these animals' bodies are perfectly designed to be aquatic apex predators. There are moments when Cooper makes himself known to his reader, but mainly he stays in the background. He seems pretty happy to stay there and let the otters take the starring role. As I said, there is just a whiff of memoir in this book. It's there, but just barely. The most we get of Simon Cooper's voice is when he's taking us through the history of how otters were historically persecuted in Britain. They were considered pests. They were considered fish thieves, and so they were hunted almost to extinction. Their numbers are on the rise today, although they still are under threat, largely due to human activity. But Cooper takes a moment to acknowledge just how astonishing it is that they made it. They're still around. Given how secretive otters can be and how good they are at avoiding detection by us, I think it was a really smart idea to take us inside of the world of the otters in the way that Simon Cooper does in this book. It is very likely that he was not 100% accurate, either about all the facts that he presented. I'm sure we'll learn more about otters in coming years that will discredit some of the information in this book. That's just the way that science goes. And he definitely wasn't 100% accurate in every last detail of the specific otters' lives. But that really wasn't the point, I don't think. I think the point was to take these otters outside of his window and transform them into characters, to take all the information that we do know about otters presently and turn that into a compelling story about this one specific otter family. I think it's fairly common knowledge, I've certainly read this time and time again, that humans tend to care more about wildlife when we feel a connection to them, when we feel invested in their lives. And since humans respond so well to stories, stories, how better to get us invested in the plight of otters than this kind of approach. But that does mean that anthropomorphizing enters the equation in this book. I thought I would recognize that as soon as possible. 
it is definitely a part of this book. I think it's more or less unavoidable whenever we're talking about animals. As hard as you try, you will never be able to understand what it's like to be any other creature besides yourself. And so we can only speak about animals in the way that they perceive the world using our own terminology. So I think it is unavoidable. And I'm also of two minds about it. Because on one hand, I do think it's silly to assume that animals would perceive the world in the same way that we do. But then on the other hand, I think we're a lot more similar to animals than we're sometimes willing to admit. So I'm kind of in the middle about it. But if anthropomorphizing is something that really ruffles your feathers, this one might be best avoided. But if you're like me, and you're interested in getting emotionally attached to a family of otters as they fight for survival, then I think you're going to enjoy this one as much as I did. Cooper does a really great job of telling the story of these otters, who he obviously grew to care for tremendously. They were essentially his neighbors. They kind of feel like they were his family in the way that he tells this story. I flew through this book in absolute record time. I was so invested in what happened to these otters. And it reads like fiction. He has structured it to read like fiction, even though you're learning a ton along the way. But an author who took a different approach in first seeking out and then talking Talking about otters is Miriam Darlington in her new book, Otter Country, an unexpected adventure in the natural world. This book was published in 2024 by Tin House, although it is a reprint of a 2012 Granta release. I received a copy from the publisher for free for reviewing purposes. However, the hardcover comes in at 304 pages. The author of this book is a nature lover and a poet who has loved otters for pretty much her whole life. When she was a small child, she would collect news about otters, generally just wanted to know what was going on with them, was desperate to see one. And then years later, as an adult, when she was traveling to Scotland, she just so happened to see an otter in the wild. And that encounter left such an impression on her that she became determined to see as many wild otters as she possibly could. So she spent over a year's time traveling around the UK, trying to get glimpses of as many otters as possible. So this book does have a travel component as she goes from place to place, but I would say it is still dominated by the natural world. And you will learn very early on just how elusive otters are and how difficult they can be to track. She makes an interesting comment toward the beginning of the book that while seals could be considered kind of like aquatic dogs, otters are much more like aquatic cats. They are very independent. They don't want anything to do with us. In fact, they are very good at keeping away from us when they want to, which is most of the time, and that poses a problem to someone who's trying to track them. If the phrase hurry up and wait were a nature book, this would be the one. Darlington spends all this time getting to her location then making sure she has everything she needs, supplies, but then also information about otters. She finds a spot where she feels like she's likely to see an otter, and then she just waits. As she's waiting for an otter to show up, though, she does take time to describe all the nature around her what it looked like, what it felt like, what it smelled like, what it was like to be there in that moment. And you can really feel that through her writing. I mean, no surprises here since she's a poet. It is gorgeously written, this book. I underlined so many passages because certain parts just took my breath away the way she would phrase things. I will admit, though, after the third or fourth go around of this hurry up and wait routine, I started to get weighed down a little bit by the tedium of it all. Sometimes I wish she would just skip ahead to when we eventually see an otter because I couldn't take the same kinds of descriptions over and over again. When an otter does show up, though, it is nothing short of magical. Like You can feel her excitement through your fingers. In general, though, this is much more of a cerebral book. The Otter's Tale is like a drama. This one is much more philosophical. Throughout, she's considering the otter. She's considering its place in the modern world. And she's also having conversations about, and I would kind of say also with, different works of literature about otters. Most notably is probably Ring of Bright Water, which is about a man who kept otters in captivity. She actually meets with someone who was in that book and talks to him about those years in his life. Because tracking otters is so challenging, this author has to seek out help from other people, including a conservationist who specializes in otters. So as this author is learning more about how to find herself in the same places as wild otters, which is her ultimate goal, simultaneously, 
she's learning about how much they're up against. Pesticides and other poisons making their way into the water where these otters call home, people killing them even though it's illegal to do so, dwindling food supplies and habitat, and then most critically, otters getting hit by cars. Even though otter populations are on the rise in Britain, they are still really at risk because of human activity. There's even a part in this book where the author goes to the postmortem of a male otter who was hit by a car. And while it is heartbreaking to read about, it is very effective in demonstrating their plight. In comparing these two books, I do think The Otter's Tale was more thorough in its discussion of the history of British attitudes toward, but then also persecution of otters, whereas Otter Country is probably a better choice if you want to learn more about what otters are up against in our modern day. Both of them have a ton of otter facts, and there is some overlap. And I would say that they both employ a similar strategy of peppering in information as you go along rather than presenting you with it all at once. It's much more digestible in the way that they both choose to do that. However, now that I've read both of these, thinking back on them, I just can't help but feel that the otter's tale was more about otters than Otter Country was. There's just so much downtime in Otter Country as she's waiting for otters to show up, and I couldn't help but get impatient at times. I can't even imagine how she felt in those moments. But I had to remind myself sometimes as I was reading this book that this was indeed a book about otters because I felt like we were hearing about every part of nature that wasn't otters because they just weren't showing up for her. I think it was actually pretty smart on Simon Cooper's part to just assume his way into these otters' lives to fill in all the gaps of what he couldn't see, because it's pretty clear that even when you are very dedicated to observing otters in the wild, as Miriam Darlington obviously was, traveling all around the country to do so, much of their lives just isn't for our eyes. If you're looking for gorgeous nature writing, investigations into literary works on otters, and a discussion of the otter's place in the modern world, then Otter Country would be your book. But if you want to learn more about the history of the otter in Britain, and you want the chance to figuratively live alongside a family of otters for a period of time, then The Otter's Tale might be more for you. I did really enjoy both of these, but The Otter's Tale definitely came out a bit ahead for me. But those were my thoughts on these two books on otters. If you have your own that you would like to share, or if you just want to let me know if one or even both of these books made their way onto your TBR, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. Below. Links to where you can get your hands on copies of these books will be in the description box below for you. And also in the same description box, I've included something I like to call the further reading section, where I've listed out some book titles you might also want to check out if this topic interests you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.